much to introduce me. <laughs> so today we're very happy to have our very own Paul Wigman, who is going to be talking about dyson selberg integrals and the aspects of quantum geometry. Thank you. Uh, so as I said, it's uh, my <clears throat> work with Anton Zabrotin. We made it uh, about one year ago. And it is sort of mathematical work, work on mass. And uh, mass is advantage of mass is easier than physics to discuss. Uh, talks on mass is generally easier than talks on physics. <laughs> so I'm using this a bit here. It's not really mass. Uh, but let me first start from uh, before I introduce all these names and objects, let me motivate you. Mm. <laughs> and I tell you what this is about. Uh, suppose you have a complex plane. This is my complex plane. And uh, a domain on this complex plane. Mm. Uh, this line, uh, this contour curve, contour gamma, separate interior from exterior. So let me consider for simple, mm, it's a conventional to consider exterior domain. Which is the main T. Exterior is the main. And what I want to do is I would like to map conformally the exterior to the exterior of the unit circle. Uh, sorry, to, to this exterior of the circle. So I call it plane Z. And uh, this may be W, W. <clears throat> it's a conformal map given by analytical function f of z such that exterior goes to exterior Riemann mapping theory tell us that it's always possible yes it tells me that it's always possible but it doesn't tell you how to construct the map and as we know from experience As you know from experience, uh, it is almost impossible to find conformal webs. It's very difficult, except some very specific domain. Uh, there is a classical result of uh, Hekesa uh, in 1923 of uh, a practical way how to construct this domain, how to construct conformal web. It's a mathematical theorem from the textbook. I will explain. It's almost obvious, but it provides a very powerful tool for numerical uh, computation of conformal maps, which is a kind of very good practical problem, important practical problem. <clears throat> and the procedure is the following. Uh, here's my uh, contour. And I would like to put the n particles, n points, right on the contour, uh, and assume that this point interacts through Coulomb interaction. And that is the energy. Obviously, they will be distributed somehow. And if I find the minimum of uh, this energy, this will be the equilibrium positions. To find the minimum, I take energy, differentiate, and one chosen coordinate will get a certain number of equations, n, n equations, n minus one equations. Um, find the position of these points. Once I found this point, they're called fecative points, uh, maybe numerically. Then would like to consider a polynomial whose roots are those points. So this is an argument of this polynomial and its roots points, its entire function, obviously. 
I choose Z to be outside of the domain. And that simple formula, one over N out of this polynomial in the limit of N goes to infinity gives the conformal map. That's a classical result. Right. So take a contour, put some particles here. Let them cool and interact into dimension. They occupy a certain position, choose them, find them, maybe numerically, and then consider a polynomial which roots are those points, send n to infinity. The, the entire function will become conformal. Why, why cool? Let's think the point. But if I change the power to something else, garbage. Garbage. Um, so the question which I would like to ask is uh, just a few words before I ask a question, before, just a few words about the expected points. So I put some points here and ask uh, the interact column, so column, they repulse. Column interaction repulse. They, so they, they have the same charge. So there's what's called repulse. But the space is limited, right? They repulse but can't run away from each other too, too far. And they eventually distribute it somehow here. Now, under conformal map to the union disk, each point is mapped to has some image. And the issue of the Sefecata theorem is that. When n goes to infinity, over there in the sort of not physical plane but mathematical plane, they will distribute uniformly equidistantly. That's not correct, but it's large n, they distribute uniformly. Then when you map it back, you will find that density in the real curve of those points. Density is sum of delta function number of points in this uh, element of the uh, curve, sum of uh, over points, density. It's uh, definitely proportional to prime of the <clears throat> of the conformal map, such as that this integral will be total number of particles. This integral also total number of things. And this, what is wrote, written here, it simply means that in the limit of large shell, over there, they will be distributed uniformly. Then when you map it back, you will find the real position, compute the density, and it is density. <coughs> Such density is called harmonic measure. So harmonic measure, it's, uh, it's literally that, uh, but physically or, or symmetrically, it means it means the following: <clears throat> take a domain, uh, choose a point infinity or any given point, and start to send Browning movers, particles which. Uh, Diffuse randomly move left, right, growing moves from infinity. Some of them miss the domain from to, to infinity, but some of them stick. And we ask, what's the probability to find how many particles will stick to the given element, given length element? That's called harmonic measure of this element. And uh, given to the prime of conformal map. And this is elementary. <clears throat> what is less elementary is that this part of this Okay, that's what we need to know about Fekita points. I will appreciate uh, comments. Well, uh, so, the other question uh, which I would like to raise is Is there any version? kind of quantum version of this Fekita points. 
Because quantum, quantum version of conformal map, telling this loosely, and you will forgive me, is conformal field theory. In my case, it's a boundary conformal field theory since I have a boundary here, yeah, and my, my conformal field theory may be live outside of system. To quantum version of factor story would be some information or some representation of uh, boundary conformal field theory. That's a, that's a question which I would like to address. So if those minimization of Coulomb gas produce uh, so simply and so efficiently conformal map, what does it mean for either any kind of version of it in quantum world? That's my question. <clears throat> so you want to you want to generate a boundary state on the left hand side, or what what would it do? It, it would it would because you have your you have your conformal map here, mm -hmm. classically classical classical conformal, and the quantum version is is going to act on the space of of boundary states in the CFT or. Uh, perhaps, we'll see. but that's a question to address. Uh, in mathematics, the Piketa theorem used in a variety has a variety of applications, but uh, one of them is it is a finite dimensional approximation of conformal map. It's approximated by polynomial. Polynomial is huge degree. We take one over n power of it. Polynomial is a huge degree, but it's finite dimensional. We can control it. Of course, if this n goes to infinity, it becomes not a polynomial, but a function, analytic function. Mm, and uh, that's provide finite dimensional approximation. Advantage of this final dimensional approximation is that it's converged uniformly. No matter which point of z you choose, it converge uniformly, regardless of the very powerful thing. <clears throat> so, if there is an analog in quantum world of this theorem of this story, that will give us finite dimensional approximation of conformal field theory, something which depends on finite number n large, but such that. When we set to infinity, conformal symmetry, which doesn't exist, find that n emerges. But we know that's possible, right? Conformal field theory usually really, uh, um, okay, the roots of conformal field theory is phase transitions, critical phenomena, critical phenomena formulated for the letters. <clears throat> finite lattice has finite number of sites. When we send mesh to zero, we happen to be in a critical regime. In critical regime, a new symmetry which doesn't exist in lattice, conformal symmetry emerges. So we know that finite dimensional approximations of conformal field theory exist. It's a lattice model, Isaac model. However, the problem is that it's a uh, n square size. It's too many sites. And in this story, you will see that it will be not n square, but simply n, boundary proportional to the boundary. And we understand that, that most of this is absolutely redundant. And formal field theory means that all information will be written out of the boundary. But boundary will be approximated by by much less number of points. And this is what will happen. So approximation by lattice is historically motivated, it may be important, but absolutely redundant. There is a better way. <clears throat> right, just one quick question. So 
it's going back to your your mapping as a, a good numerical approximation to the, to the formal map. Um, this there's this the older kind of mapping, the Schwartz Christoffel. Yeah, but map. this is for polygon. That's for polygon, but I could yeah. imagine just for the sake of argument, inscribing D with some polygon. How would that? Yes, yes it's to coming to here. here. Absolutely right, right. It's uh, um, it's a little bit related to Schwartz Christoffel. I will not use it, uh, but uh, yes, you may say that for the polygon doesn't matter which polygon. We have a Schwarz Christoffel map. Yeah. And then we may choose many, many vertices here and smooth it to something smooth. Get uh, the result. Fikata theorem doesn't use this. It's too simple. It's it's very simple, right? Yeah. But but you right, it's uh, there is a link. Which I will not use. There is a link. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, one way to quantize it, there are many ways to quantize, right? But uh, the most practical way is so called stochastic quantization, which means you take a pick at the condition, they take a energy differentiated over position, find the settle point, I mean, physical point. That's supposed to be zero, but now I say no, it's not zero, but maybe white noise. So B is a Browning particle, number I as many of these points, and uh, they just uh, do noise, does noise, this force does noise. Particle is located on the curve, kind of a Bit on the wire. Uh, and um, very, the variance of voice noise, noise is, I, I call it beta, it's a sort of diffusion coefficient. Okay. Uh, what I wrote here is a little bit so called Langevin equation, and uh, it has a Gibbs distribution. The Gibbs distribution is even. And yes, in this form, it's so called Dyson diffusion, introduced by Dyson in 1964. Uh, and it has a Gibbs distribution, Gibbs distribution given by this weight. So it tells you that the probability to find the particle, particles in these positions in the intervals dig psi, which I didn't write, forgot. Is this is, is, this is like in the long time limit? Hmm? Is it in the long time limit? Yes, gives the distribution. You let this particle, they, there's a friction, I mean, it's noise, so they diffuse, 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 they're frozen, mm -hmm. and equilibrium distribution is it's broken coming here. So this was like a constraint equation before the Fekker condition. So you're Stochastic. I, I relax. It fake condition will be zero, but I now say not zero, but some noise. Right? Then there is probability distribution, mm -hmm. not equilibrium, but so the top equilibrium measure is given by that formula. Beta is diffusion coefficient here, and uh, z is a normalization factor. Integral of this probability must be one normalization factor. Are you allowing them to diffuse off the boundary as well? No, 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 no. They are like, uh, like beats on the string. Beats, or something. Yeah. Beats, beats. Would you get the same answer if you allow them to go off? Because I'm just yeah, imagining if, if you had a conductor. Different stuff. Different stuff. Different stuff. No, they can string. But thank you. Uh, if you want to normalize uh, this Boltzmann weight, we come to the integral over my contour, over position of all these particles uh, of uh, distance between them, between every pair times twice beta, where beta is diffusion coefficient. Uh, 
we can think about uh, this integral as a column guess. Instead of writing that, I exponentiate it. And then E is a ticket of pool of energy. It's simply now raised to infinity with inverse temperature beta sort of. Uh, and the problem is reduced to Coulomb gas. Statistical mechanics of Coulomb gas particles on uh, these bits on the wire, on the contour, they just move in the temperature. Tem this is the temperature. Okay. Of course, if temperature goes to zero, which means beta goes to infinity, it immediately becomes Fekete problem because eventually it's all reduced to minimization of this energy. But uh, being quantized, that's a beautiful thing. And now all these variables that the uh, psi one, psi n, they're uh, like quantum mechanical variables, like no, zero. Just, just uh, integral. Integral. Okay. Integral. Classical. It, it's again classical, but now it's not minimization of the energy, but uh, statistical mechanics. How do you see that the energy is always positive? It's not necessarily always positive if particles uh, come, is, uh, first of all, it's negative. Oh, right. It's a column particles. Right, right, right. But shouldn't there be some so if, you, with respect if you tell them apart, they don't like it. Energy rise. Energy rise. Right, right, right. Energy, no, no, energy fall down. Right. They don't like each other, but the space is limited. So they oh, always. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, those integrals are related to uh, orthogonal polynomials. I briefly mentioned that. Uh, it's sort of extensions of Seguer theorem. If you choose beta, one of the special values, um, and consider that integral with sort of insertion of um, product of monomes with the roots psi i, and these are parameter, these objects. Uh, polynomial, obviously, right? Polynomial of degree n, and that happened to be bi orthogonal. That's Segal theory. So give me a contour, and they'll give you a polynomial, orthogonal polynomials. <clears throat> so it's kind of geometrization of orthogonal polynomials. Okay. So those integrals which we arrived to uh, has an interesting story. Interesting history. Um, uh, Silberg in 1941, right in the beginning of the war, uh, published a paper which is called Remark on a Multiple Integral, where he computed that integral, but with, inter with two insertions. The one is at one and another is at zero. With two parameters A1 and A2, they could be dropped by choosing K1 equal one. A2 equal one, then it will be my integral. And this is the formula which he obtained. And this is called Selberg integral. But the difference from what I'm doing is that his domain support is from was integral from zero to one. And uh, I'm considering a closed code. But that's what he computed. Um, <clears throat> Um, uh, and uh, being sort of uh, a shy person, uh, a young Norwegian, um, uh, he published it in Norwegian and without a detailed proof. Uh, later in the in, in, in a letter to a friend, he said. This paper was published with some hesitation, truly Norwegian, and mm -hmm. in Norwegian, since I was rather doubtful that such that the result we knew. The journal is read by mathematics teachers in gymnasium, so he didn't publish it in a full journal, in a full uh, peer-reviewed journal, simply because he was not sure that it was a publication. Unfortunately. I have been unable to find the formula in the literature. Uh, the present proof here, however, seems inappropriate 
as it would make this paper significantly longer. If it's turned out that the formula is new, I intend to publish a proof at a later date that he didn't. Uh, but, but other people, other people. Uh, a reason why he studies this integral is not known to me, but some mathematician told me that it's, uh, he wanted to uh, generalize uh, generalized, uh, Euler beta function for needs of uh, number theory. But I don't know that. Okay. Uh, independently, but much later, 1950s and 1963, Dyson and Meta study random matrices and uh, can consider the following integral. So M is a N by N unitary matrix. This matrix assumed to be non-degenerate and could be diagonalized, psi eigenvalues. And then the integral of some object written out of matrices environment in, invariant under uh, similarity transformation integral over har measure uh, produce the same integrals as Selberg integrals. Although this coefficient beta is supposed to be one, there is also version for one half and two. Selberg integrals for uh, arbitrary beta. That integral called Dyson or meta Dyson meta and Dyson integrals, 1963. And the difference from Hilbert integral, the integral goes over the unit circle. And in Hilbert, it's uh, on the interval from zero to one. Uh, those uh, choice of beta are rather specific from probabilistic point of view, from point of view of the Dyson diffusion, they represent so-called determinantal processes or what we now call free ferments. Uh, and also have they have integrable structures, uh, namely that integral uh, becomes uh, is is appears as a tau function of total lattice hierarchy. I will not talk about it, and generally I assume beta arbitrary. <clears throat> yes, the support is S one. <clears throat> So this is Dyson integral 61, 64. And Dyson also computes them, obtained rather simple results. Explicitly. By the way, the tools of computation of this integrals uh, consist, two books consist of one powerful instrument, integration by parts. Uh, and that which allows to write down um, um, discrete equations, which would be solved by iterations, discrete relations. Uh, more closer look on this, tell us that what he, uh, he, was, he was doing by integration by parts is what we now called obtaining word identity with respect to diffeomorphisms. I will not touch that, but Okay, so if you put two insertions, much more complicated integral, also computed by Dyson, have a little bit longer formula, that is too sim nice and simple. <clears throat> okay. So my question now is, I would like to ask, what if I change the support? Not a unit circle, where results is given by these gamma functions and explicit, but I deform unit circle and ask how does this integral change? So Dyson integral is on the unit circle, but now I would like to deform it and ask how does this integral change? Uh, then it becomes a functional of the contour, a sort of geometric object, which knows only about the contour. You give me a contour, I give you this TN, it depends on this n number of particles. It depends on temperature and not computable, of course. But something dramatic and very interesting happened when n goes to infinity. Well, I'm confused about something very basic. I'm just confusing myself now. It's a closed contour. 
just in the circle case even. What, how is this measure well defined? Zeta I minus zeta J? These are angular variables. No, it yeah. is a position on complex plane. Position on complex plane, but am I not okay. thinking about it on S1? Yeah, this is positions, particles. Yeah. And the position psi, psi, and the psi modules, it's simply displacement of them here. It's a um, arch element of the quantum. You just integrate over the quantum, that's it. And so you, you're, you're just embedding it in, okay. So it's not it's integral, not... integral over the quantum, over the arc. This measure is arch element. How, how, how would you integrate over the quantum? This is kind of Because you need the embedding. Hmm? This makes sense. Just it has to sit in the complex point. plane. Other, other, hmm? I mean, other, otherwise, I have I have uh, I have two points here on the circle. I have this distance, and I have this little distance. But there's no unambiguous way unless you embed it. Make a choice. Right, no, put, put two points and in the, the, the end of you just integrate over the divide. What's it? Oh, you have lots of divides. Doesn't it? You have lots of divides. This is one particle. Pi one, two, pi two. Right, but each is defined one, two pi n. But not defined. No, but the potential. Not the measure. Not the measure. It's a scope. No, but the potential. Your your zero i minus zero j. This is the modulus. Make a choice. This is the modulus. So it's the distance between them, right? Between them, like the like the yeah, the yeah so you need the embedding. You need the embedding in the in the complex yeah. plane for that to make sense. It's, it's not intrinsic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that this, that's simply Euclidean distance between them. Yeah. Not measured, not along the quantum, but right, just right. it's not intrinsic to the to the boundary. Right. Human particles on the in the plane itself. Yeah. Not on the plane, but along. A wire. It's a kind of bits along the wire. They can't remove be removed from the wire. Just move along the wire. I understand. What you mean. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> In addition, if you know this integral, you may ask, what happens if you integrate some symmetric uh, function with this weight? A good example of symmetric function is. What we, what, this, what we call vertex operator. It's a polynomial which depends on um, Z, which roots are C, R, Xi, I, and degree A, A is arbitrary number. So for example, you can insert that object here and integrate, you get something which depends on Z and parameter A. Is the C restricted to be on the curve or? No, no, no everywhere, everywhere. In, inside or outside? Inside or outside. And I will consider only outside for one. This is my It's a sort of an additional Coulomb charge, right. which I imposed here far away. It's produced electric field, and those charges moved a little bit, right. shifted, right? So sometimes for yeah. gas charges. But in the conformal field theory, we will call it vertex effect yeah. with conformal weight A. But this is just the name. So so far. Yeah. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is uh, in this talk, I would like to uh, present the result. What this object is in the limit large n. And as I said, it's a geometric functional. It's no only on the contour and maybe on beta. When n goes to infinity, if nothing remains, only geometry. I would like to show you the result, but in order to describe, I will not don't have time to and the ability to explain how it has been obtained. But the result is interesting by itself. I hope you enjoy it. But in order to describe this result, I need some preliminaries, prerequisites. And this prerequisites is elliptic operator and there is spectral determinants. <clears throat> Those objects, spectral determinant of elliptic operators in complex plane are subject, I don't know how to, some people call it quantum complex geometry. They appear when we study quantum problems. They are objects of conformal field, 
conformal analysis, complex analysis, but somehow didn't have not been studied in classical time, but well studied nowadays in uh, and appears all the time in quantum field theory. Okay, so now it's a little bit boring, but let me list as as brief as I can operators, and then the spectral determinants. The first one is called Newman jump operator. It has many different names. Sometimes it's called uh, Newman Newman to Poincaré, no, Newman to Dirichlet operators. Uh, books have different names. And let me explain what it is. <clears throat> Suppose I have a contour and a function defined on a contour, I call H, defined right on the contour. I can find harmonic function harmonic function outside of this damage of the code. This will be one harmonic function. Or I can find harmonic function with this boundary value inside of it, harmonically expanded outside and inside. Obviously, this function touch each other on the boundary and form some continuum function, but their derivative is not. They jump. And this jump of normal derivatives of two harmonic functions outside and inside is action of Newman jump operator. Okay, physically, it means that on the contour, I have what is called simple layer. I have some charge, electric charge on the contour. It produces Coulomb potential in point Z outside somewhere, right? And if I have this column potential, but would like to restore the density of charge, it's called simple layer, I have to apply Newman jump operator to the potential to the substance. So, so if you have a star, not a star, but some distribution of charges or mass here, and measure electric field to be there, you would like to know what the shape of the of the domain of the star. And Newman jump operator does it for you. It's take electric field or Coulomb potential outside, act on it, and reduce the density. So, sorry, so is this acting on functions defined outside the domain? Defined outside. Functions. Oh, okay. It's function. It's it's acting. Yeah, it's right. a, is it? Okay. Okay. Next one is called Newman Poincaré operator. To do that. Similar thing, but with a double layer. That's the density of dipole. Positive negative charge on the contour, normal derivative, because it's dipole. They also produce some electric, electric field, electric potential outside. And uh, V acting on this density, given which gives uh, potential, is called Newman or Newman or character. So in physics, we call it double layer. Uh, this discontinuity that we are measuring by the Neumann per air is it dis yeah. discontinuity the first derivative. It's a normal, normal first of all derivative. Right? So the function is sort of continuous here, but derivatives are not. Okay. <clears throat> and the next one is simple Laplace operator, but there are two. One defined in the interior with the Dirichlet boundary condition, and another one defined in the exterior with the Dirichlet boundary condition. So there is a three operators, Newman jump. It has a zero mode, therefore I put prime here. Um, uh, okay. Now, for those operators, we would like to compute, consider their spectral determinants. They're well-defined. Of course, they diverge, but could be um, zeta function or heat kernel or whatever way regularized and produce some functional, which depends only on curve, on geometry, nothing else. And there are three of them. It's Newman jump spectral determinant, grid volume operator, this is called, that's called double layer. And there are two Laplace operators. We also consider spectral determinants. <clears throat> so between those monsters, operators, uh, determinants, there is a relation. Uh, one is not well understood, 
and recently discovered a relation that determinant of the Newman jump is a simple there equal to inverse right, of determinant of the double layer. The product is one, actually perimeter. Uh, I don't know the name of this formula, but it's, it's known in the literature, but uh, And then there is another formula, which is called surgery formula due to Steve Dietrich. It's known in physics. It says that if I take logarithm determinant in the interior, if I take determinant of Laplace operator in the exterior, and add the determinant of the Newman jump operator, which you find on the contour, I will get a constant. Physically, this formula means that if you have a Gaussian field everywhere, you can integrate this field by pieces, integrate them inside, assuming the field is fixed on the boundary, integrate it outside, and then integrate over the field which you fixed along the contour, three contributions. Together, they supposed to be the full integral over the entire plane, which is a constant. That's the surgery formula, mathematically proven by Log bigger is a log of per uh, perimeter, a constant, perimeter. Okay, finally, uh, there is a so called Polykov formula for determinant of the Laplace operator, but there are two, interior and exterior, and it's written through, some, some people call it your wheel field, but it's actually metric on the contour. If you give me a metric on the contour, conformal or harmonic measure, then from the, give me conformal map, I compute the metric, prime of it, then logarithm of the determinant is equal to uh, so-called Polykov formula, or Polykov Alvarez formula, sometimes it's called. <clears> or <throat> boundary Liouville theory, Liouville action, it's also name, but it's expected to be. Okay. And now, after all that, I can, I can present the answer, and which, uh, You may find it interesting. So I take that Dyson integral, but not on the circle, unit circle. Dyson computed on the unit circle is this value, but on an arbitrary curve and send n to infinity. Computer can compute it, right? So it's uh, if n, I don't know, 15, it's, it's a multiple integral, so computer can compute it. Uh, but n goes to infinity, and it's equal to the following thing. Some not essential constant which depends on n and beta and does not depends on geometry, on the curve. On, on. Then <clears throat> exponent beta minus one square over each pi beta times so called Lovner energy. Doesn't matter where this name comes from, but that's this simple thing. It's a metric, logarithm of the metric, or you will fit logarithm of the metric. Neumann operator act on it. And it's a classical object. Times one of these three answers, they are identical. One is square root from determinant of Newman jump operator, geometric object, or equivalently one of a square root of a fred operator, that's simple there, double there, or one of a square root of uh, determinant of Laplace operator inside and outside, plus one of n correction, which we neglect. That's a kind of remarkable uh, it's not a simple result, but it's uh, conceptually very simple. <clears throat> so if you want to compute that determinant, ask a friend from 
who knows Mathematica to compute this multiple integral, presumably with large n, that will be the value. <clears throat> okay, so what actually it means? What does this? It's that's a result of uh, quite uh, substantial calculations, which I don't want to bother you. Uh, how it has been derived, but result is compact and uh, worth uh, not worth it. Uh, the meaning of this result is. Of course, uh, clear because those objects appears when we integrate over Gaussian field located in certain domains. Right, that's uh, integral of the Gaussian field is a one of the square root of this determinant. So that means that this Dyson integral somehow in large n mimics Gaussian integrals. And uh, Gaussian integrals, in a sense, in a sense, uh, almost equivalent to conformal field theory. Right? So, if we, what conformal field theory is about? <clears throat> what is the definition? <clears throat> if I define my field theory outside of this domain, compute some correlation function, perhaps primary fields. And then change geometry, vary the boundary a little bit. Then correlation function, then I don't need to compute it again. Correlation function computed for a given geometry is simply transformed under transformation of geometry in the known manner. For example, if the vertex, if the primary fields, and I compute it in one geometry, and then compute it in another geometry, they are related by conformal factors mm -hmm. in one geometry in another geometry in some powers which hold conformal dimensions and the dependency is computed out of conformal ways so the only need if you know for example for the unit disk the answer for the unit disk you can obtain the answer for whatever boundary provided that you know the conformal method Simply by if it's primary operator, then it's a few components. <clears throat> and that's what happened uh, in, uh, in uh, Dyson integral. So I skip all that stuff and present this result. So suppose I uh, take this object and assume that this, this um, polynomial A is arbitrary parameter. I assume that Xi is low uh, Coulomb particles which repulse each other and located on my pointer. Integrate over all the positions with the Boltzmann weight. I will obtain what I will call relation function. And then do the same, but for unit disk. Then remarkably, they are related according to, in the larger limit, according to description of conformal field theory. That's somehow, Provided that Z chosen outside, those positions chosen outside. So in a sense, in a sense, uh, the Selberg integrals give a finite dimensional approximation for field theory. So it's a simple integral, but many variables fine. But, uh, if you manage uh, to do one over n expansion, you obtain the objects which we um, Okay, then we will stop now. Is it is it only free conformal field theories that are being approximated by the uh, Selberg integral? Or? Not free. The conformal field theory is always it's a Gaussian integral with certain boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably mean the certain charge, one or not one, right? Right. This one. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's a beta is beta plays a role of um I'll show you a couple of other things. 
Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I see. I see. Ah, so you can get you can choose particular beta will get one. Mm -hmm. If uh, beta is one, you get one. Right. Right. But we know this if beta is one, it's free fermions. Right. Simply free fermions on this domain. Right. Of course, it's C is one. But if yes, beta yes. is not one, C is less than one. And um, most of the objects of uh, CFT, boundary CFT, uh, could be reproduced by simply computing or deforming geometry. Deforming the support of this integral. So, not as one, but on other supports. Then it's transformed and it's transformed accordingly. So, when you deform the boundary, transforms to another system? If you deform the, the support, mm -hmm. which is the boundary of the outer domain. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, this is, then the integral also change because it's a function of the supports, but it's change controllable by conformal transformations. Mm. So, so, so generally, given a CFT, there's only some set of bulk primaries and boundary primaries yeah, that come from yeah, yeah, it's a glossary, right? One right, one. right, right. One for one. But uh, is there a way to see what constraints would be on like these vertex operators that presumably correspond to primaries or? Uh, yeah, like, yes, 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 this is a primary. Right, right, but, but, but how do I see which ones are, like given some CFT, there's a prescription for what operators right, are? Right, right, so part of there's it. the same story here, but it needs some uh, certain sophistication to understand it. I can do this, but... Uh, 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 <clears throat> the way how this integral has been computed at large M, uh, Dyson computed, or Silberg both computed by integration by parts. Right. The way how we compute it, but only for large M, is differently. We do, we trans write what we called word identity mm -hmm. with respect to diffeomorphism of the plane. Mm -hmm. It's a certain identity between various integrals. Right. But they are organized such that small iteration of geometry can be iterated. You compute it from an ideal circle, then circle may be slightly bumped, right, and you right, right. find a connection, then you find another connection. And this procedure reminiscent uh, operation with word identity and CFT, and then you identify the objects. I see. But but uh, this procedure is finite dimensional. It's uh, every right. n is finite. No, it's not field theory. Must just yeah. the particles. I see. And but but without experience, it may, may not be easy. It's not obvious. Okay. Example, for example, this formula for the central charge may not be obvious. You know what's right? Hmm? What did you say? This formula for central charge may not be obvious from uh, if you look for the integral, so it's a multiple integral, but uh, it's happens. Uh, it's, 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 like uh, it's miles here, so it's CFC. But there is a Ruvik also can be done in the same manner. So it will be plus, but uh, but it will be, I have to organize it a bit different. But anyway. Both CFT and UV could be approximated by multiple integrals with large number of variables of that kind. What do they want to make corrections here? Uh, they're not interesting. Uh, corrections, I, I, can, uh, I can say. Uh, mm. uh, these corrections, right? Yeah. <clears throat> So those objects, it's a leading term. Leading term. Actually, the leading term is, is this one, is this one, but it's boring. It's kind of classical, but, but uh, the sub okay, the first non-trivial leading term. 
uh, it's a global object which depends on globally on the geometry, on the contour, right? So complicated formulas, like, like uh, Polkov formula, right? But corrections to it will be local objects. Such as, such as, if uh, let me introduce curvature, Gaussian curvature, say in this longer, longer contour. And then other correction will be some function, local function of this curvature, something like that. But they're local from curvature, local function from curvature, in, in the sense, not in the sense. Those are non-local. Yeah. Okay. So it means that it means that if you know what happened in this piece, you may neglect what happens there simply additive. But those objects north everywhere, both everywhere. Right? They are they based on conformal anomaly, so they know globally, geometry globally. And corrections know geometry locally. Very difficult to compute, but it's clear that they locally. And in that sense, not interesting. So they don't encode any kind of conformal data that you would be interested no. in? No. At least I don't know the applications. Uh, they actually computed, some of them, some corrections have been computed for beta equal one, mm -hmm. uh, where it's reduced to free fermions and then we compute through the fermions. <laughs> But but as soon as beta not equal one, it's impossible to compute them. Uh, nevertheless, it's clear that they are local. In that sense, lost. Uh, in the so uh, your beta can be any value. Mm -hmm. Your beta any, can be any, any value. value. So in your central charge, the central charge depends on beta. So you this accesses both unitary and non-unitary. Yeah. Right? yeah, unitarity plays absolutely no role in this. It's actually quite interesting. And the fact that whether it's minimal model, not minimal model, absolutely no role. It's a, all, all continuous functions of beta. And the specific that beta if rational, it's minimal models. It doesn't show up in calculations known to us. Mm -hmm. So, is the is this chart? Let's suppose yeah, I pick some beta that gives me a minimal model. So, I'm on the minimal model, I have a finite number of.